Mark A. Stein from my feud and with the Tux Pop crew. And welcome to Motor City Comic Con 2015. RK stuck with you again at Motor City Comic Con 2015 with the legendary man himself, Mr. Neil Adams. And if you don't know who he is, that's your own. Or, or maybe maybe you're just young. Maybe that's <laughs> what it is. Alright. Neil, I'd like to know, how did you get started in comics? Were you a fan growing up? Uh, I went to the comic book company's offices and they kicked me out. They all kicked you out. That's pretty much it. Uh, how well, it's a little like hard to have an, uh, an answer to that question. Yeah, they kicked me out because they didn't think they were going to be in business for the next year. They advised me to get out, do something serious with my life, and don't do this comic book stuff. Because within a year, they're going to be out of business, and I should go do something useful. So I did. Okay. okay. I was an assistant on a comic strip. I did comics for advertising, I did advertising, I did storyboards. Uh, for a short time I did, uh, right at the beginning, I did Archie pages for Archie comics, Archie joke pages that I wrote, drew, lettered, and inked for $32.50 a page. And that was the best money I ever made right at the beginning, and then I did advertising. And I hung around comics and I did comics for advertising for a while. I did a syndicated strip syndicated strip for three and a half years and then because I personally ended the strip I fell in back into comic books and I got work at Warren apparently the, the industry had not failed in the, in the year that they predicted they hung on like a, I don't know like a band that's at the edge of a wall clinging on with their fingers and they actually were a little bit successful so I worked for Warren publications and I worked for DC publications and I did war stories and then I continued to do comic books from there, and I decided, you know what? I really kind of like this business. I like this comic book stuff. Much as I like the comic strips and the advertising, where there's much more money, comic books are fun. And so I decided that I would keep at least one portion of my life available to do comic books. And that's what I've done. Hey, we can see that you've done some legendary work. Um, you were working on X-Men for a while. Yeah. Well, I kind of saved it, didn't I? It was going to be canceled. and I Actually, they canceled it after I did 10 issues. And then they brought it back because those 10 issues were so popular that everybody wanted to see more. And so they brought back the X-Men. And we have the X-Men that we have today. If it wasn't for those 10 issues, X-Men were gone. In fact, they had killed off Professor X before I started the thing. They had killed off Magneto. And they were pretty much dissolving the X-Men. So I brought Professor X back to life, I brought Magneto back to life, and we relaunched the X-Men. I, I got to read some of them, those were really good. They were pretty good, I gotta say. Same thing happened with Green Lantern. Green Lantern was on the block to be canceled. I went in and I started to uh, work on it with Denny O'Neill, and we did Green Lantern, Green Arrow, and we saved the title, and we kept on moving. Same thing happened with Batman. Batman was going to, Detective Comics was going to be canceled, and Batman was on the block as well. And I volunteered to do Batman, and I did it, and we saved Batman. You turned the Dark Knight back into the Dark Knight. Yeah, he hadn't been the Dark Knight for quite a while. It was a, kind of a satirical show on television, which was very good. We all loved it, uh, but it was kind of silly. And uh, it was very hard to take DC Comics and to steer them away from continuing to do that satire of a TV show with Batman walking around in the daytimes and in his long johns and children not pointing at him and saying, Mommy, Mommy, why is that man walking around in his underwear? So we took him back into the night. We took him back from walking through doors and had him come through windows and step out of closets and go, boop, that and scare people. Uh, so we turned Batman back into what he was intended to be, this Dark Knight Avenger who stalked the night and frightened the 
evildoers. And uh, for that short moment, Bali, then he later punched him in the face. Anyway, yes, we turn Batman back into the character. Now, you talked about you and Denny O'Neill's work on Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Mm -hmm. One of the most poignant parts of that is when you turn Speedy into a heroin junkie. Um, whose idea was that to begin with? Well, that was mine. Uh, I felt we were running out of ideas uh, doing the Green Lantern and Green Arrow, that uh, Denny O'Neill was getting down to uh, uh, overpopulation as an issue. And I realized that we really had not long for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the printing press because overpopulation is not exactly an issue. It's sort of an opinion. Uh, we had done a lot of other things that were cool. We had insulted the Vice President of the United States, the President of the United States. We had, we had gone after uh, uh, Union Towns. We had uh, dealt with the Chicago, Chicago 11 trial. We dealt with a lot of stuff. And I realized that if we were going to do anything worthwhile, we ought to attack the drug issue. But unfortunately, that was against the Comics Code, which I really didn't care about because I had followed the Comics Code very religiously up to that point. And I decided we were going to kick the Comics Code in the teeth. So I did that cover. And I handed it to Mr. Julie Schwartz, who was my editor. And he dropped it like a, like a hot uh, potato. And he said two things. He said, one, we're never going to publish this cover. And two, I'm not going to pay you for it. Well, as it turned out, we published it. And he did pay me. So that was the beginning of cracking the comics cover. And we we got rid of it. We got rid of the comics cover pretty, pretty. Okay, now I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Later on in your career, you had started continuing comics? Continuity. Continuity. Good. Yes. Um, and see, you really did. What did you learn from your mistakes at that? Uh, what did I learn from my mistakes at that? I didn't make any mistakes. Okay. One of the, well, uh, one early mistake I made was we weren't, uh, we didn't stay, remain in continuity. We didn't uh, keep the books coming out every month. We finally got them coming out every month. We were tremendously successful. Our last run, which we called Death Watch 2000, so we 50,000 copies for each title for three months. And then the comic book industry went through uh, a disaster. The disaster was collectors jumped into the market. They decided that comic books were going to make them rich and they were going to buy comic books like crazy and were going to store them away in their garages. And then they were going to sell them 10 years later and make a ton of money. And then they all realized that since they were all doing it, they would never be able to make their money back. They had million seller comic books that nobody would ever buy. And so they all stopped that collector's market almost on the same day, leaving millions of comic books in the comic book stores. Uh, 1,500 comic book stores approximately went out of business. I looked at the bad things that were happening in, in the industry. Uh, certain comic book companies were going bankrupt. And I said, you know what? Neil doesn't belong in this market right now. I am out. Goodbye. I will see you. So Continuity remained a company. We remained doing lots of work and lots of things, but we did not go bankrupt or get out of the business. And I told everybody at that time, you know what? When business gets good again, I'll be back. Business is good again, and I am back. We are back. Well, it's wonderful to hear, um, certainly because your artwork is just... Tremendous. Well, people like, day. people like my artwork, but I would say that people prefer my stories. Yeah, Superman vs. Muhammad Ali is written by myself. Most of Dead Man is written by myself. I work with the best writers in the business. At that time, it was Roy Thomas and Denny O'Neill. Um, Batman Odyssey is a very good story. The Superman one that I'm working on now is a terrific story. I will be working with other writers, but I also will be working with myself, turning out really terrific comic books. Uh, and, and people look at the look at the comic books and they say that's terrific artwork. But the truth of the matter is that artwork can be as terrific as can be, but unless it tells a story, it's not important and significant. It's just pretty picture. That's exactly how I feel. Um, I've got one more question just to ask. My pastor Glenn Merrill from Tremont Alliance Church is a big fan of yours. Growing uh -huh. up, could you give him just a quick shout out? <laughs> that doesn't sound like a question. Uh -huh. What's his name? Glenn Merrill. 
Pastor Glenn Merrill, how are you? It's nice to see you. I'm sorry you're not here at the Comic Con to say hello. All right, and with that, we are done. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Toxic Pop has a new Facebook page. Like it to see pictures and keep informed about our upcoming events and videos. A link is in the description. Go to www.facebook.com slash toxicpop1.